Good morning. This is the Insurance Careers Movement Phase 2 kickoff webinar where we really enable millennials working in the industry uh, to become the face of insurance. Thank you for taking the time uh, to learn more about this important initiative. To start with introductions, um, this is definitely a, a true coalition with many insurers and uh, other organizations that are supporting the insurance careers movement. Today's presenters will be myself, I'm Kirsten Marr, Chief Marketing Officer for Valen Analytics, Nicole Merton, uh, Director from MyPath and the Institute, Brooke Kelly Hunt, Director of PCI, Deborah Pickford, Executive Director for Invest, Chad Record, uh, Associate Vice President for the Jacobson Group, and Mike Boa, Chief Communications Officer for CAS. The agenda today is logistics for the Phase 2 kickoff. Um, we're going to go through our timeline uh, really now or August through December. How to register insurance millennials so that we can communicate and build community uh, amongst this important demographic in our industry. We have new social media tools uh, to uh, unveil and show you today. Uh, we're going to talk about classroom engagement and how to have in-person communication uh, with young people we want to recruit into the industry. We've shared a lot of trends, statistics, and research over the past uh, several months, and we're going to talk about how to turn those um, insights and statistics into messaging that you can use. We're excited to launch a new, uh, announce a new partner working group, which Mike Boa from CAS will uh, talk about, and then we will have Q&A. If you are, um, so an overview um, of, of this movement, this is a grassroots movement uh, aimed at collectively spreading the word that insurance is the career trifecta. It's stable, it's rewarding, it's limitless. If you are new to this movement and need a more thorough overview, please visit our website uh, at insurancecareertrifecta.org and listen to our webinar recordings where we talked about phase one and, and the initial parts of phase two. Today is going to be a very logistical uh, presentation, just getting into the details of how we're rolling out phase two. I also believe we have several millennials working in the industry attending today's webinar, so thank you for your interest in helping attract bright minds and new thinking uh, to help shape the future of insurance. As most of you know, Phase 2 is meant to ramp up millennial involvement from those working in our industry. We're empowering them to tell their career stories as an authentic engagement approach to non-insurance millennials and even those uh, younger than them. So we just put together a quick timeline to explain how Phase 2 is going to work. There's a big push now, really through November, to build a network and a community of insurance millennials who can spread the word. After we've engaged insurance millennials throughout the fall, we want to get them inspired and excited about how important they are to the success of our next Insurance Careers Month. So we'll be giving them tools to help them share their stories online, engage in classrooms, and with other local events. In addition, we're lucky to have the support of some of the most powerful leaders in our industry, as well as highly influential leaders and associations that advocate and educate on our behalf. So in December, Brian Dupereau and the other CEOs who have endorsed this movement will hold a town hall for our millennial ambassadors, as we're calling them. This town hall is to be scheduled um, and held on Friday, December 2nd at 10 o'clock Eastern. We'll provide more details as it gets closer. And the purpose really will be to reinforce all of the good messaging that we've communicated to our millennials and to make sure they understand how much our industry leaders are counting on them to spread the word about the value of a career in insurance. So we're very excited about this particular event, and as I said, um, we will definitely be sharing details with you as this gets finalized. So that just gives you a brief overview and timeline uh, of phase two. And with that, I am going to hand this over um, to Nicole Merton from MyPath to talk about how we're going to be leveraging 
uh, the MyPath platform, which really is a communication portal uh, to those outside uh, of insurance to tell them about rewarding careers and connect them to employers uh, in our industry. So Nicole is going to talk about how we're going to leverage that MyPath platform to actually create a community and a network of millennials working in the industry today. Nicole? Thank you, Kirsten. I'm very excited to be such part of such a wonderful initiative, so thank you for allowing me to speak today. Um, and just as a reminder, just want to touch on what the goal of MyPath is. So MyPath's goal is to generate awareness of the limitless career opportunities the insurance industry has to offer. As a collaborative industry effort, the platform serves as a marketplace uh, of information to educate and excite students and young professionals about the prospects of careers within the insurance industry. So how do we accomplish that? We accomplish that through shareable content, blog posts, uh, partnership listings, usually internships, but other information from our partners, and tools just as a few examples. MyPath acts as a knowledge-based platform for young professionals and students to discover more information on the industry, including careers, tips to get them through school, and afterwards into a rewarding career. Hopefully, you are participating in the conversation on social media or with a company blog. To get involved, consider sharing your own content, including success stories, career opportunities, career experiences, and the benefits of belonging to the industry, or even highlighting available internships within your company. <clears throat> so now that I've uh, provided a background on my path, I just want to share how we're moving into the next phase with the insurance career movement and building a network of champions to better engage young professionals. We're asking champions to share their stories. Uh, there are many positive and rewarding stories about the insurance industry and how it's helped out, and, and we just really want to make sure that that story is heard and that message is, is resonating across uh, all groups. So on, on the next slide, you'll see an example of the registration form that we've created. The form is for young professionals and students to sign up to become these champions that we're speaking of. It's located right now on the MyPath platform, but we're also looking at other places to uh, promote this as well with the insurance career movement. And we'll be sending out communications on or to uh, ask individuals to join the job and be a champion as well. So our goal is to have as many champions as possible sharing their stories and engaging the peers on the limitless opportunities in the insurance industry. Um, we ask that you sign up for those young professionals that are on the call and for those partners that are on the call as well. Recruit through your company, social media, and even your industry um, connections. And as you can see, we really try to make it as, really e as easy as possible to become a champion. So you just have a few questions on that form. You sign up. You think about what story you want to share, and then share it everywhere. Don't be afraid to use your networks use the networks that we're providing as well, but we want to just make sure that we're getting the message out. And of course, we want to know if the message that we're sending out is resonating. So therefore, we'll recruit approximately 100 professionals, uh, young professionals and students, and we'll track their messaging, and we want to see what's resonating, what's not, and we'll also use that group as a focus group to kind of be a sounding board of what, if what we're doing is in the right direction or if it's resonating, if it's the right message. And as always, we look forward to sharing any of the findings that we get with the coalition. So now that I've shared the goals, how we hope to accomplish those goals, and who will help us get there, the last part is where. Uh, as you can see, to support each other in sharing content and interacting outside of these webinars, a LinkedIn group is in development that will be available for insurance career movement partners and champions. The group will provide shareable content that partners and champions can use in all social media platforms. We'll also be able to share what is working, as I said in that research that we're doing, what's working, what's not, what's resonating, what's not, and providing best practices as well. The group will be launched early next month. A communication will go out to all insurance career partners and the champions that have signed up through the registration form 
to join, gather, and hopefully start sharing insights. Uh, we look forward to partnering with you on this exciting initiative, and um, I'm just happy to participate. Thank you so much, Nicole. It was really helpful, and thanks for all the support my path is providing uh, to this initiative. Next, I want to hand it over to Brooke Kelly Hunt from PCI, who is our social media leader in this, in this movement, who's going to talk about some exciting developments we have uh, to support you as you reach out uh, online. Brooke? Thank you, Kirsten. Um, as Kirsten mentioned, my name is Brooke. Um, I am the Public Affairs Director with the Property Casualty Insurers Association of America, or PCI. Um, PCI represents more than 1,000 property and casualty member companies, and we are proud to continue our support of this movement. Um, we've been working on this for the last two years, and social media is a big part of millennials' lifestyle. And during the month of February, you saw the insurance stats in the last presentation where we had such great engagement. Um, two quick reminders. Um, keep using hashtag career trifecta. Tag all of your efforts to unify our message. Hashtag career trifecta um, during the month of February was tweeted more than 3,000 times by 649 users with over 3 or 9.3 million impressions for the hashtag. And also, uh, if it's Tuesday, um, like today, use hashtag Talent Tuesday. Talent Tuesday um, tweeted more than 1,000 times by 552 users, nearly 3.2 million impressions for the hashtag. So uh, that was just during the month of February. So we want to keep the drumbeat going uh, by using those hashtags starting now as we move into the fall and into February. Um, in terms of next steps, for the social media portion of the movement. We are excited to announce that the new social media guide is updated and it is ready to go now and we encourage you to start using some of the posts and keep doing so as we move into the fall and, Feb and into February. Inside the new social media guide we highlight several of uh, the tweets and top posts throughout uh, February and updated new industry stats and as well as highlighted some of the videos that were posted throughout the month. Um, while we encourage you to share posts within your own organizations and companies, we also want you to have the tools that you need to get started. So that's why we've updated the guide and hope that you can use this as another tool as you move forward with your social media content calendars. Um, we are also excited to announce that we have a new Instagram account for the movement. Please follow us at insurancecareers.movement. There we will share posts and regram posts starting now. So please make sure you use the hashtags, hashtag career trifecta, as well as hashtag talent Tuesday, so that we can see your posts and we can share them as well. And I know that we've been through a lot of these before, but I don't think that it hurts to review a couple of the best practices as you're thinking about your content social calendars and what to post. So it never hurts to post using an image or video. Of course, the more engaging the photo, the more clicks you will get. Also, make sure that you include a link if you can. Uh, this allows followers to learn more about your companies and drive traffic to your websites or other platforms. Also, keep it simple. Twitter is 140 characters. Limit that for Facebook. Keep it the same, as well as Instagram even shorter, using multiple hashtags. On Twitter, when you add attachments now, like photos or videos, there will no longer be a count as your character count, so you'll have more room for words. Um, and we encourage you to keep the engagement going. Um, we've done a great job so far, and we want to continue to share uh, what others have posted. So please feel free to retweet content. And you can always reach out to me if you see something that you'd like for us to feature on the Main Insurance Careers Movement Instagram account, and we will do so. Um, always use the hashtag um, so that we can track your posts. And be conversational. Make sure that it's relatable. Um, some social media trends that we're seeing um, live video, many platforms are now offering and have been for some time live stream video options such as Facebook Live, Periscope, uh, working with Twitter, taking advantage of those tools as people love live video. Think mobile. Um, the majority of us already know this, but 80% of Internet users own a smartphone. 
So make sure that you're mobile friendly in your posts. Be aware of sizing of images, such as um, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. All have different sizes, which are listed on their sites and apps, so make, be aware of that. Uh, real time, according to Search Engine Watch, 70% of Twitter users expect a response. Um, so engage with your audience within the hour. So that's why we say engagement is really important. Um, again, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me anytime. I would be happy to walk you through the social media guide, help with any best practices or any questions that you may have as it relates to social media, millennials, and the insurance careers movement. So, Kristen, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Brooke. Um, when we did our survey after the first Insurance Careers Month, um, many of you said the Social Media Guide was one of your favorite tools that we put together. Brooke puts a lot of work uh, into it with the help of some of the others uh, on the coalition. So please take advantage of that, and we'll send out the link to the new guide when we send the recording uh, tomorrow. So with that, I'm going to hand it over uh, to Debbie Pickford from Invest to talk about the importance of face-to-face -face time uh, with young people in terms of engaging them uh, in our industry. So Debbie, take it away. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for being here this morning. Invest is also very proud to be part of the insurance careers movement. And I'm going to talk a little bit today about what we really do at a grassroots level to um, go into classrooms and engage with young people. And one thing we have been hearing over the last few months is it's really important to have young professionals, young insurance professionals, engaging with um, our invest classrooms. So uh, a very important part of our work, and we'll continue that, uh, engaging young people to come into the classrooms and volunteer and talk a lot about their experiences in the insurance industry. But today I want to give everyone on the phone a little bit of advice about how to approach a classroom. As uh, many of you might know, it, People in teachers and people in the school systems are very busy people, but they are interested in the INVEST program. We have over 800 and about 820 schools now participating in the program. And my advice to approaching uh, a classroom is to identify a local school, the so schools right around your office, who, who might you want to approach to volunteer in their classroom. Do your homework, find out if there is a business class, a financial literacy class. Um, talk to the school, see if there might be some interest in coming in to volunteer. Uh, form a team to assist you, uh, other people in your company. I know um, also in insurance agencies, there's other folks that want to come in and help. Uh, find the career technical education liaison. This is a really important uh, advice given to us out of Chicago, where we have a number of the Chicago City Public Schools who are participating in INVEST, they advise us that going and finding that career technical education liaison is really important and will help smooth your path pathway into doing those volunteer efforts in the schools. Offer to participate in some of the high school and college career events. They are always looking for speakers and people to come and bring literature and talk to them. So um, find out where those career events are and offer to volunteer at them. And then have some patience with the process. Uh, schools are very, very busy. Uh, teachers do not necessarily answer email during the day because they're busy teaching classes. So it may take a little bit of time to build that relationship with the school. But um, once you build it, it will be a really strong relationship. So just have some patience. Then um, what's in it for us? It's kind of the, what I call the with you. Um, so it's always important to talk about when you're approaching a classroom or approaching a school, what each stakeholder will get out of this. So obviously students who are our target and who we want to talk to, we want to teach them insurance and we want to provide them resources, talk about insurance careers and how stable and rewarding they are. So um, for students, they get practical training and experience in insurance, and also some um, mentoring from the professionals that are coming into the classroom. Teachers receive free resources. We have a whole curriculum built, uh, insurance curriculum built, that they can access online for free. And they also, the teachers also get some networking time 
with volunteers, with insurance agents. And then the volunteers and partners who are coming into that classroom are building the relationship with the school. They receive some community involvement and get to be known. that They're recognized as leaders. Also, um, it's really good for reputation because that school and that community knows that your company or your insurance agency really cares enough about their local school to give up some very valuable time to come in and work with the teachers and the students. And you really get to provide some support for the classroom as you, as I mentioned before, um, classrooms need extra assistance and resources. So you have the opportunity as an insurance professional or as a young insurance professional to assist teachers with instructional materials and help advise them about insurance. A lot of teachers aren't that, um, they haven't learned that much about insurance until they are actually given the curriculum and they start going through it. Uh, you can support them with expert knowledge. I know some of our, our volunteers in the classrooms often are helping answer questions about insurance. People just aren't that, you know, the layperson isn't that knowledgeable in insurance. We like to encourage student participation in the entire insurance process or in the insurance careers. We know um, we get students so excited, some of our scholarship students actually write about how they go back home and tell their mom and dad how to buy an insurance policy. So they're learning a lot and then using that and becoming more participatory in the process. Also as a volunteer, you can mentor students, you can offer internships, jobs, and this goes even beyond just insurance training. We have a lot of volunteers in Dallas, for example, which is this photo you see, We've had companies and insurance agencies go into classrooms and not just teach insurance, but teach um, things like resume building, professional approach, dressing for success. So even you know a, a wider range of career development. And then you have a chance to offer students professional development opportunities because you're in there, in the classroom, you're volunteering. You can see which students who might be a good fit for your company later who might be a good fit for an internship. So um, there's that chance to really build that strong relationship. And that's all. The other the final thing I'll say is um, to see our curriculum materials, just visit www.investprogram.org. And then if you'd like to see what we're doing grassroots in the classroom, we're posting almost every day on Facebook. And that is um, Nat, the National Invest. So go into National Invest. Facebook, you'll see our pictures, you'll see what our volunteers and our teachers are doing in the classroom to engage young people in insurance. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. Those are all um, really great resources that I think can help everybody just um, ideate and figure out, well, what is our approach to the classroom? And um, so you give a lot of great, very practical, tangible examples that people can follow and, and sort of make their own. So thank you for that, Debbie. All right, so um, now that we've kind of covered you know, how to register millennials and how to communicate online and how to communicate um, and where to do it in person, what are we saying? Um, and how are we backing it up by facts? And the Jacobson Group, uh, as a leader really in research around the insurance industry in terms of recruiting uh, employees, they have a, a particular focus now on um, the next generation coming in. And Chad Record uh, from the Jacobson Group is going to uh, sort of translate all the research they've been sharing with us over the past several months into messaging uh, that you can incorporate uh, on your own. So Chad, I'll hand it to you. Thank you, Kirsten, and good morning, everybody. Uh, Jacobson is very excited to be a part of this, and I appreciate all of your time. I know a lot of you are familiar with the career trifecta. But as Kirsten referenced, I want to talk about the message as we reach out to young professionals to discuss the insurance industry. There are essentially three pillars, if you will. Uh, we're looking at stable, rewarding, and limitless. So the first slide starts off with stable. According to a survey that the institutes conducted, 50% of millennials want a stable job. Insurance is a stable industry. Even in the worst economic times, individuals and businesses will always need insurance. In fact, auto insurance and healthcare coverage is now required in all 50 states within the US. 
Taking a look at the graph here, you can see that the national unemployment rate compared to the insurance industry unemployment rate is very different. It speaks almost for itself. In June 2016, the U.S. unemployment was at 4.9 percent compared to the insurance industry, which was at 2 percent. It's virtually non-existent unemployment. The second pillar that we talk about here is rewarding. Another institute survey says that 64 percent of millennials want to make a difference in their jobs, and we do. In the traditional sense of helping homeowners, individuals and businesses after disasters, and minimizing risk. Also through community outreach. In 2015, a McKinsey report found that the PNC industry alone contributed $575 million to charity in 2014. The IICF, which is the Insurance Industry Charitable Foundation, founded by the PNC industry, contributed $23.5 million in local community grants and nearly 200,000 volunteer hours to hundreds of community nonprofit organizations by mid-2015. Continuing on with rewarding, we also know that in addition to making a difference, the industry offers other career benefits. As you can see in this chart, our median salaries for most positions are much higher than the national average. Entry-level roles start between fifty dollars to $55,000 a year. Outside of money, of course, there are other career perks. Things like professional development, networking, work-at-home capabilities, and travel opportunities. The third pillar that we talk about here is limitless. The insurance industry is not just stable, it's growing. Over the past five years, we've added 100,000 new jobs in the insurance industry. In addition to that, we know that 66.3% of insurers expect to increase staff this year. With the addition of, of growing and adding jobs, obviously the insurance industry has to evolve. Innovation and technological advancements have inspired numerous disruptors that are taking the world by storm. Being an industry that analyzes risk and recommends solutions, we have to stay on top of these trends to best protect our customers. Most of the things that you'll see on this slide weren't even in our minds 10 to 15 years ago. Things like driverless cars, with car and software makers likely facing litigation following a self-driving car accident, the expansion of commercial liability insurance will be necessary. Also drone usage. Insurers are looking to how we can use drones in claims processing following disasters as well as for combating claims fraud. I'll go down the list here, remote monitoring, cyber risk, usage-based insurance, telemedicine, sharing economy and analytics. I can say that the insurance industry is adding analytics jobs more than five times faster than the overall national employment growth according to, according to a study by Accenture. In wrapping up here, uh, we're talking about sharing the message. One of the biggest places insurers are missing out in terms of marketing their career opportunities is their own websites. Here you already have a captive audience. Tell your story. Use videos, images, testimonials, anything that will grab and keep attention. You have to inspire these candidates to apply. Be where your audience is. Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, YouTube, and more. Use those venues to demonstrate that you are an employer of choice and that we are an industry of choice. Kirsten, thanks so much. I'll turn it back to you. Thank you, Chad. That was really helpful. It's a way to take sort of research and statistics and make it real um, in ways and messages that people can really use. So we're excited today to have Mike Boa uh, from CAS join join us to talk about a new partner working group uh, that has been established for large trade associations and professional organizations. And so I'd like to turn it over to Mike just to talk more about that. Sure. Thank you, Kirsten, and good morning. As Kirsten said, I'm Mike Boa, the Chief Communications Officer for the Casualty Actuarial Society, where I have worked for the past 20 years. One of the things I've enjoyed most during my time working in, in the insurance industry is the collaboration that I've experienced, seeing people and organizations come together to reach a common goal. 
And that collaborative spirit is certainly on full display once again with the insurance careers movement. The movement is focused on building coalitions. We've built a coalition of companies, over 600 strong, to support this movement. We're going to mobilize millennials and build a coalition of young people to help tell the career trifecta story. And now, we're working to build a coalition of industry, trade, and professional associations that can help take this movement to the next level. There are associations and societies representing almost every kind of professional in the insurance industry, from agents and brokers to underwriters to accountants to actuaries, and you can see a, a few of these associations logos on the screen here. And there's organizations with member companies, like the Insurance Information Institute. Finally, there are organizations representing the very students we wish to reach with this movement, namely Gamma Iota Sigma, the International Risk Management Insurance and Actuarial Science Collegiate Fraternity. The missions of the trade and professional associations in the insurance in industry, almost without fail, include some aspect of career encouragement and career development. I mean, it just makes sense, right? It's in our best interest as organizations to continue building the pipeline of our own members. With our members retiring and leaving our organizations, we need new members coming in. Because this issue is core to our continuing existence, I can think of no better partners to have involved in insurance careers movement than the industry trade and professional associations. So I was thrilled when it was suggested that we form a new working group for trade and professional associations, and I'm excited for the opportunity to coordinate this group. Our organizations have thousands and thousands of members, and we have established communication tools and tactics at our disposal to reach our members, including social media platforms with thousands and thousands of followers. So we're well positioned to support insurance careers movement. Many of us were already quite active in phase one, and we're ready to help launch the next phase of the movement and build that group of millennial champions. And we've already gotten started. We held a call last week to kick off our group, and it's already so obvious that we have an enthusiastic bunch of professionals who are poised to help meet the Talent Gap Challenge. So next slide. If you're representing a trade and professional association and want to join us going forward, reach out to me. I'd love to hear from you and get you involved in our discussions about how the insurance industry trade and professional associations can not only plug into and support but help lead the growing insurance careers movement. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. This is a really important um, group and effort to add uh, to this movement, to your point, to really make this a grassroots coalition of the industry working together and supporting each other's individual efforts, but amplifying the message by working together. So thank you, Mike, for stepping up and helping to get this group started. Uh, we'll also make Mike's uh, information available to you after the, after the call so that um, you all can connect with him directly uh, and get involved. So let's go ahead and just sort of recap what we've discussed. So between now, really, and November, it's time to recruit uh, insurance millennial employees to register and participate in this movement. It's time to start building those career stories that can be shared online and in person. And then as soon as school is back in session, start engaging with schools and community events. Um, we've talked about this um, in a number of our calls. Your CEO makes this important internally. Leverage your CEO to elevate this initiative and the importance of recruiting talent into our industry by getting your employees excited um, and just elevating the conversation within your organization. Use our resources to help. Um, and we, uh, InsuranceCareerTrifecta.org has a, a whole set of resources to help you get your CEO involved, to help you with social media, uh, to help you with some messaging that you can take to schools. Uh, every, well, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You can take everything that we've developed and then make it your own. And then, of course, if you are a professional trade association or group, reach out to Mike Boa from CIS and join, uh, join that working group. So as we look forward, um, we've always discussed this rollout in phases. 2016 is really a building year. Um, the first phase we launched in November of 2015 uh, through our first Insurance Careers Month. Our goal was to recruit 200 companies um, and have a, a, 
a group of CEO champions, and just to start coordinating social media and working together. We tripled our goal with 600 companies actively participating uh, during the month of February. Phase two is what's in process. It's time to engage millennials. Uh, they have the authentic voice. They should be the younger, innovative face of our industry, and we welcome all of their participation and their leadership. And it's not too early to start thinking about what is coming next. Really, we've, we've established February as Insurance Careers Month. It's a great kickoff event for your annual talent efforts for the year. Start thinking about how do you want to make a big splash in February with hundreds and thousands of companies and individuals sharing the message during the course of February, it's the perfect time to make a big splash. Start thinking and planning about what you want to do over the course of the month of February and really look at it as your annual kickoff to help your talent efforts uh, improve and, and increase the number of young people interested in joining your company. We've also developed this one-page checklist uh, which is available on our website and it just sort of helps you you know, check the boxes and make sure you uh, have done all of the things that will help you be successful uh, in participating and helping lead uh, this movement. And so with that, um, I'm going to just give everyone a moment to type in any questions uh, that you have. And in about 45 seconds, we'll come back and we'll start answering them. So go ahead and type your questions. I already see a bunch coming in. All right, I'll go ahead and get started just answering some of the uh, basic questions. Again, questions, will we be sharing the slides? Yes, we'll be sharing the slides and the recording, and you'll see that in an email that will come out uh, tomorrow. I think someone else is asking in terms of the um, Insurance Careers Month, ICM is the uh, acronym that we use for the LinkedIn group. Um, will that be ready early August or September? It will be ready in early August. Nicole, that, is that correct? That's correct. Perfect. Um, and then there is, uh, you know, a good question about marketing, um, sort of the insurance careers uh, movement or insurance careers month brand, um, you know, really getting the message of career trifecta out there um, and, and helping provide context by strongly branding kind of the insurance careers movement. Um, I think that's a great question. Um, it certainly is sort of the point of Insurance Careers Month um, and getting that, you know, sort of out there um, broadly um, with the whole coalition sort of behind it. There, this is an all-volunteer movement. There is no, um, you know, sort of funding or, or anything like that. No fundraising is one of our mottos. Uh, but certainly, hopefully, the big megaphone around Insurance Careers Month uh, as it ramps and it scales uh, will help really provide that sort of marketing boost um, and context. But um, if members of the coalition have great ideas about how to do that and, and uh, increase that, we are, we are always uh, open to those suggestions. Uh, someone's asking, what's the checklist? The checklist is just um, a checklist to participate in the movement, and it just gives you a one-pager so that you know, have you sort of done all of the different things that really prepare you to participate um, and help your own talent movement. So um, that it's, it's just something to help you organize. Um, this, hold on one second. All right, so people are asking if you're a smaller agency or a company, you know, who can really help you get into the classroom um, and I think that's sort of the, the purpose of uh, organizations like Invest. They actually make that easy for you to sort of plug into their system to access the classroom uh, if it's not something that you can really take on your own if you have a small staff. So I encourage you to connect with Invest after this to see how you can just sort of plug into an existing infrastructure. Um, and so I think we, let's see, do you find an interest level amongst millennials to become independent business owners 
insurance brokers, or service-oriented employees. Uh, this would help knowing how I can market my business expansion opportunities. Uh, I think what I would say is there is no one answer to that question. Uh, while we're sort of describing a, a group of people uh, based on their age, they, there's certainly just such a wide variety um, of interests and you know, demographics within you know, any particular generation, right? They're not all the same. And I've seen actually many uh, millennials who are running their own insurance agencies participating in this movement because it's a great way for them to say, listen, I am now a CEO of a growing agency. I've got a new take on things. My business is is growing because I'm really resonating with today's consumers all the way through people who are interested in joining the industry to help really with the innovation that Jacobson outlined. The amount of venture capital money into insurance is, is hitting record levels and there are a lot of really smart entrepreneurs and innovators joining this industry and helping to shape its future. So those may take the form of you know, tech companies, and they're also taking the form of employees that are looking to join their organizations and grow it and innovate from within. So I would say it's, it's all of that uh, and more. Um, and then I have a question. Um, what organizations are planning to track the progress of the campaign, and will we be provided with updates? Um, so we track this on a number of different levels. Um, my path is really collecting the registration of millennials in the industry uh, who want to participate and share their stories and we'll survey them and talk to them and see is it resonating, what's working, what's not working. We'll write up those findings and those survey results and share them. In terms of overall social media engagement uh, through the month of February and really all year round, Brooke from PCI leads that. And we share that every week. Uh, we share that every week um, during the month of February to give an idea of engagement and traction, et cetera. So anything that we collect in terms of momentum and traction and the amount of companies and people, uh, we publish that back out to everybody who is on uh, our email list. And so if you are not currently on the regular insurance career trifecta um, website and, and filled out that form to be on that mailing list, You'll want to do that, and we'll send out a link uh, tomorrow, and you will get all of those updates. All right, I think that we have answered uh, a majority of the questions. Again, I want to thank all of the uh, presenters today, not just for their presentation, but for everything that they have prepared uh, to support the industry. It's uh, a lot of hard work and, and well received. So uh, thanks to everyone for joining and spending the time and participating. and um, just absolutely pleasantly surprised at the, at the amount of interest uh, and participation and collaboration that exists within this industry. We'll follow up with you via email communications if you ever have any other questions. All of our contact information is on our Insurance Career Trifecta uh, site, so you can reach out to any of us uh, specific to the question that you have. So have a wonderful day, uh, and we'll talk to you again soon.